These are the top 10 anti-aging foods you should be eating after 40. As we get closer to 10, those are the most important foods that you should never miss eating on any given day. But wait, there's more. I actually have an 11 and a 12. The 11 will be the oils you should be cooking with, and 12, things you should drink for anti-aging after 40. If anyone tells you that they can reverse your aging, don't walk, run away. These people are lying to you. You cannot reverse aging. Scientists have never been able to figure that out. But by eating the right foods, we can definitely slow down aging and have a much better quality of life as we get older. Okay, number one, we're gonna start with a fruit, an avocado. Why? Well, avocados are quite frankly delicious. And it's hard to believe that something that tastes that good can be so healthy for you, but it is. Here's the deal. Avocados are high in monounsaturated fats, they have some protein, and although there are some carbohydrates, it's not enough to spike your blood sugar to cause any kind of insulin reaction. Who doesn't like a good guacamole? Besides, avocados have a lot of essential vitamins, including many of the B vitamins, C, E, and K. As far as minerals go, avocados have a lot of potassium and magnesium, two minerals that we just don't get enough of in our diet nowadays. One of the things I love about avocados is that they're very versatile. Look, I mentioned guacamole, and we all know about that. Avocados are always great in smoothies. They offer a lot of creaminess in a smoothie. Oh, and by the way, if you've never had an omelet with avocado in it, try it. You will love it. Number two on the list is also a fruit. We're talking about olives. Olives have been shown to be high in vitamin E. They've been shown to lower the risk of cancer diabetes, and heart disease. Maybe it's because they're low in carbohydrates and high in fats. Although an olive is a fruit, it's a very versatile fruit. It can go in salads, it can go in many dishes, as great as a tapenade. And yes, even if you're gonna enjoy a beverage, olives can go into a martini. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only way you can make a proper martini. Anyone who pays attention to my podcast knows that I'm always railing against fruit juice because fruit juice is nothing but liquid sugar. Well. Guess what? The fruit juice that comes from an olive, that's called olive oil. Also very healthy for you. At home, whenever we bake any sort of whitefish, we might put a quarter of an inch of an olive tapenade on top. Incredible flavor, incredible taste. It's hard to believe something that tastes so good can be so good for your health. Number three is the final fruit on our list. It's berries. What kind of berries? I don't know, whatever you like. Blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, you choose. Berries are great because they're antioxidants. What's an antioxidant? Well, when our bodies are stressed, we create these free radicals and they just roam around our body. And if we have too many of them, it can cause oxidative stress, which becomes a problem. That's where berries come in. The antioxidant qualities of berries will actually lower the amount of these free radicals in your system and keep us healthy, keep us younger, longer. That whole anti-aging thing we're talking about. The other thing that's great about berries is that there's some sweetness to it without it being too much of a glycogen spike. You can actually have some berries, enjoy it, it's a treat, it's a dessert, and you won't get the spike you would get from other fruits and some vegetables. Number four, cruciferous vegetables. Wow, that's a fancy word. What does that include? Well, you have broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale. I don't know why anyone would eat kale, but hey, if you're into that, actually, I know one good recipe with kale. If you take kale, just put it on a cookie sheet, put some olive oil on it, which we will mention later, and some salt. You can put it in the oven and crisp it up. It actually tastes like a chip. Maybe there is a use for kale. The great news about cruciferous vegetables is that you get a lot of bang for your buck. There's something called glucosinolates that are in the cruciferous vegetables that have been known to fight certain kinds of cancers, including lung cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. Cruciferous vegetables also have a lot of vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate, which is vitamin B9. I've only listed three or four of the cruciferous vegetables here. There are plenty more. Some you may love. Radishes in there, horseradishes in there, chard. Just go check out the Google machine and it'll tell you about all of them and you can decide which ones you want to try. Oh, by the way, Cole Robbie's in there too. I think that Cole Robbie is Margot Robbie's brother. Number five, nuts. Nuts are always a great television food. What do I mean by that? 
People always feel like they want to have a little something, something when they're watching television. Whether it's football season or you're into F1 or soccer, you might even be into the housewives of wherever. Nuts are always a great snack. Eating nuts has been shown to lower your risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, as well as keeping the ratios of your cholesterol in check and lowering your triglycerides. Quick note about nuts. You don't want to get overly processed nuts. You want to start with raw nuts if you can. If not, you want it to be dry roasted. Whenever you get nuts that have flavors on them or anything else, they usually take a seed oil to put onto that nut in order to get the flavor to stick, even if it's only salt. So you want to get the best nuts you can get. So try to get raw. If not, you want to get dry roasted. Now, my favorite nuts. The more fat, the better. So at the top of the list, I have things like macadamia nuts walnuts and pecans. Right behind that you have things like almonds and cashews. These are all great nuts. They will keep the wolf from the door. They're an easy and satisfying snack. Number six, dairy. So why is this such a great anti-aging food? Dairy offers the fats you need to keep long, even energy going throughout the day. The protein is wonderful for muscle building and the calcium too for your bones. Dairy is not just great for brain development when you're younger, it keeps our immune system and our brain strong as we get older. Dairy comes in many different forms. If we're talking about milk, think about it. Every mammal needs milk when it's young, but not as it gets older. So what is the best way to consume dairy products as you get older? Well, there's cheese, yogurt, and butter. Butter's not just yummy, butter is also great as an oil when you're cooking. Number seven, chicken. Now you're gonna start noticing a common theme as this list gets towards the end. Lots of protein. We need protein, it's the building block for every cell in our body. Animal protein is the best way to get this. You get a ton of amino acids. Amino acids work in different ways throughout our body and getting enough of them to build muscle, to build bone, to build every cell in our body comes from animal protein. Can you get this from other proteins, pea protein and what have you? Yes, but you would have to eat so much of it just to get the same amount that you would just be in gastric distress all the time. You want to stick to the stuff that will work better. You want bang for your buck when it comes to protein, and chicken offers that. You'll get somewhere between 26 and 31 grams of protein per serving of chicken. And don't forget, you always want to leave the skin on, and when you get into the legs and wings and all around the thigh part, get the gristly part. You want to get the skin in there. You want to get all of that collagen naturally. You don't have to go buy a bastardized product to get the same thing. Number eight, fish. That's right, more animal protein here, but this time fish. So what would fish offer that chicken doesn't offer? Oh, just omega-3 fatty acids and plenty of them. That's why you want to eat fish early and often. I'm a big fish eater. We probably have it twice or three times a week around here. Now, you're going to ask me, does it all have to be wild-caught salmon? No. It's better if you can get that stuff, but that stuff is not inexpensive. I tell everyone, do the best you can when it comes to fish. Yes, not all fish are equal, but mix it up. You can try white fish sometimes, you can have darker fish, you can have fish such as salmon. There's fish all across the board that you can try and it all has a different kind of texture and flavor and you'll figure out something that you like. And while I'm on the subject, yes, crustacean falls into that same category. So shrimp, crawfish, lobster, if it comes from the sea, give it a shot. Fish is not just high in omega-3 fatty acids. There's also vitamin D, and B2, which is riboflavin. It's also rich in calcium and phosphorus, not to mention iron, zinc, iodine, and magnesium. Number nine, an egg. That's right, an egg. I've often been asked if I was stuck on a desert island, what's the one food I would wanna have if I was there for an entire month? The egg always comes to mind. Why? You have every amino acid that man has ever discovered in an egg. You have to remember an egg is simply an embryo. So everything that can create a life, it's already in that small package. So it's actually the perfect food. You not only get high protein from an egg, you also get great saturated fat. So an egg by itself can sustain life indefinitely. Eggs are chock full of iron, vitamins, and minerals, and a little something called carotenoids. Carotenoids are one of the strongest antioxidants out there. So when you start thinking anti-aging, Think eggs. Number 10, red meat. Oh, wait a minute, Vinny. I've always been told that red meat is gonna kill me and is ruining the planet. 
Nothing can be further from the truth. Actually, it's full of ALA. You may have heard of ALA, alpha lipoic acid. Meat has the natural version of that, alpha lipoic acid. It's been shown to fight free radicals and inflammation in your system. Studies have actually shown that it can increase your circulation. So the more red meat you get, the better. It's exactly opposite of what you've always been told. Meat is also high in protein, and we've talked about protein before in this list. It's very important for the building blocks in your body, not to mention you can get over 100% of your B12 from eating red meat on a daily basis. So there's your top 10 list. But the question always becomes, what about oils? We've heard a lot on the internet lately about seed oils and how bad they are for our system. So what can we use for anti-aging when it comes to cooking oils? Well, several oils come to mind, and you may have heard of some of these foods in the list. Olive oil, for instance, avocado oil, both great oils to cook with. Not to mention butter. Butter is a great oil to cook with. If you want to use beef, tallow, suet, or lard, those are all great for cooking and will also add actual flavor. So don't be afraid of them. And since we're talking about the top 10 foods you should eat for anti-aging, we shouldn't leave out things you can drink. The two that come to mind are coffee and tea, both great antioxidants. As a matter of fact, studies are now showing that drinking a cup of coffee a day will lower your risk of heart disease by 10%. Here's the crazy part. If you have two cups, it will lower it by 20% and so on. So drink up when it comes to coffee and tea. The one thing I've learned over the years about health, fitness, and diet is people always have the question, should I have all 10 of these foods every day? Well, no, you shouldn't, but they should be mixed in throughout the week, every week. And don't leave any of them out. In other words, you don't have to have red meat every day, but if you're having chicken on those off days and eggs on a different day, it all comes together as a well-rounded diet. So no, you don't have to have everything every day. Just pick and choose because after all, variety is the spice of life. So we just went through a list of foods that will slow the aging process and keep you healthy. But are there foods out there that we're told they're healthy, but they're actually speeding up the aging process? I say yes, there are. If you want to find out what some of them are, go watch my video, What Eating Grains Is Actually Doing to Your Body.